And here are the particulars of the Parker trade. Dolphins are going to send you the veteran receiver and a fifth round pick. New England sends Miami a third round pick in 2023. We always have to point out Belichick is expecting a fourth round compensatory pick. I hate how that's called a third round pick. Those comp picks are fourth round picks for losing J.C. Jackson. Parker is signed through the 2023 season contract pays him a pretty reasonable 5.6 and 5.7 next year on uh, camera here with Ted Johnson joining us in studio your thoughts on this trade Teddy yeah look I was excited because I'm a fan I'm a fan of the player just like you are Mike but uh, just like you I'm also a little bit hesitant when you consider it's a rival in the AFC East that is willing to just send them to you uh, like they were look clearly um, you know he's probably their third or maybe even fourth best wide receiver on this on the Dolphins right now so you're you're, you, you can say, you know, he's a, a number one. He was a number one. He's not now for the Dolphins. But, look, I, I like the player. He gives the Patriots a deep threat. Um, I just uh, – in an element in which they really haven't had. Nelson Aguilar was supposed to be that guy. He really isn't. He's been a productive player. He's been hurt the last couple of years, Mike. He's missed nine games in the last two years. So, he does get hurt quite often. But when he is healthy, I really like this player. It's speed, speed, speed. He's a deep threat, and that's what they need. However, I just don't like that they have to trade for these guys. They traded for um, Mohamed Sanu a couple years ago. That didn't work out. I just You never know what you're getting in a trade like that, so it makes me a little nervous. Okay, so let me show you a stat, Ted, that I think really shows also his value, and you're seeing it right here. These contested balls down the sidelines, these boundary contested catches. Now, he's open over the middle in this one, but when you look at this, here are the most reception on tight window throws the last five seasons. That's defined as with less than one yard of separation from your defender. Devontae Parker leads the league and has the last, uh, however, five seasons, all right? And that's a pretty good list. Julio Jones, Mike Williams, we'd all take those guys on our team. So that's a nice list to be on top of. And I think, you know, we see that. He's physical. He's tough. He's strong. I love that about him. That's maybe my favorite thing. Goes over the middle, not afraid of contact. So I love those kind of receivers. It also shows you, Ted, he's not open, <laughs> right? right? So, like, right. I think that's the that's the bad news with that stat. Yeah. He is he's a, he's a contested cast guy because he I, I don't know if he's because he does have speed, mm -hmm. so he's not a refined route runner. You know, I mean, what is it? Why isn't he open more? Yeah, look, it's it's you know you see a lot of receivers because he's big. I mean, he's bigger guy. He's six three, so he's through six three, two hundred twenty pounds. Those guys usually have a little bit tougher time just running away from guys unless you're super freaks like you know maybe like a Julio Jones who's up there, but. Um, you know what? I, I will tell you this. Um, you know, he, he, DeAndre Hopkins, who I covered in Houston for a long time, he does not have breakaway speed, but he is tough at the point of attack. And he's got guys draped all over him, Michael, and he catches balls because he's got really strong hands, big catch radius. So at the end of the day, I almost put just as much value in that. The fact that he has strong hands, he can catch it at the high point, he's tough on those 50 50 balls. And Mac Jones, I think you just all you got to do is get it close to him, and then he'll catch it, and that's really what you need. Okay. Back to the Patriots um, getting this player from a team in their division, all right? There was a time, to, uh, about 20 years, where the Pats would swing a trade like this. I think we all would say, oh, the Dolphins are stupid. You know, the Dolphins don't know what they have. The Pats just, you know, uh, stole one from Miami. They just thieved their division rival, Wes Welker. You know, they, they don't get it. We get it. We're smart. They're stupid. We're going to win this because we're the Patriots and everyone else in this division is stupid. <laughs> I don't really, after the last several years of personnel work here, I don't feel like Bill's playing chess and everyone else is playing checkers. I don't feel like he's pulling the wool over anyone's eyes. Now I feel like in my gut, you're getting this guy from a team within the division because he's damaged goods or they know something we don't. That's yeah. sort of my gut feeling. I don't, know how you, I don't know how you don't look at it that way. I really don't. And, I, and I'd like to have a, an argument against what you're saying right there, Mike, but I don't have a good one. I mean, I, I would be worried if, if, if the you know, a division rival is willing to give you a guy uh, it's really a good player when he's healthy, like in Devontae Parker. There would be sirens and, and red flags for me. However, if he passes his physical and he's healthy, um, you can see the tape. You can see the last few years. I mean, he's pretty productive. Our first-round player uh, from 2015, so he's got the pedigree. And so you just hope if he comes in healthy that he's going to be the same player he has been. What does the offense look like next year, and how does he fit in it? Is he your number one? Is he a boundary receiver? How is he used, et cetera? Yeah, he'll be, I think he'll be a boundary receiver. I think he'll be a boundary receiver. He'll, I think he's – the one thing is you kind of look at Devontae Parker, and I think, man, this is a little bit kind of – Maybe, uh, you know, a, a, a makeup from, from Nelson Aguilar a little bit. You know, that Nelson Aguilar maybe wasn't the player they were hoping and that maybe this guy fills that role. 
I see him being a deep threat. I see him going deep uh, in, in as you like, don't like to hear, stretch the field. <laughs> this is going to be a running team, Mike. They don't have threats down the field to open up the, the ball to run. So the Patriots are going to run the ball a lot, uh, as we know. And so they need more of a deep threat. And I just think this guy can make plays for you. I really do. Does he come in here? Is he motivated? Is he happy that he's here? I don't know. He's tweeting to, with uh, Mac Jones on Twitter. It seems like he's happy coming here. So that's what you just worry about the disposition. Is he, is he excited that he's come here and playing for Mac Jones? This should have been Nikhil Harry, correct? Correct. Yeah, that was, let's face it, I mean, Nikhil Harry, to me, should have probably been released last year, but they held on to him another year. I, what are they going to do with it? He's the odd man out, clearly, well, but at this point. Skill set, this is what they wanted. The, Devontae Parker's here right. because Nikhil Harry couldn't be Devontae well, he's Parker. Not, he's, he doesn't fight for the ball. He's not tough like Devontae Parker. He just, he doesn't get it. And so, I, that's, uh, that's clearly what you hope you were going to get when, you got, when Nikhil Harry was drafted here. He is not. Clearly, that has been uh, a very huge disappointment. And so, I just think, you know, Nikhil's Harry days, are clearly, are probably numbered now. How about receivers at the draft? Does this preclude them from drafting a receiver in nope. the first round? Nope, not at all. So, look, they, they need another receiver. Are you kidding me? And they need somebody in the hopper. Um, they need a young guy. I mean, they have guys uh, that are on their second contracts, third contracts that are on this team right now. Can you get a young guy? that's been developed in the system, that's been here from day one. That's what – if the, the Patriots would be smart to go out and get a wide receiver if they can in the first round. Mike. Okay. So, Parker's the odd man out of Miami because they probably have three receivers better. I mean, they definitely do in two in Waddle yep. and Cedric Wilson might Tyree be Kill. Close, yeah. So, Cedric Wilson, and, and so he's either the third or fourth guy there in Miami. So, he's expendable in Miami. Let me ask you this. In a vacuum, who do you got, Tua or Mac Jones? Who would you take? I would take Mac Jones – by a smidge. Okay, just in a vacuum. Yep. Right? Okay. I would. Who's going to have a better year this year? I think Tua's going to have a better year. I just think, again, I think the, I think the uh, excuse me, the Miami Dolphins, they're quarterback proof that offense. I mean, I just think all you got to do is get it the ball out. You don't have to uh, have pinpoint accuracy. You don't have to be the smartest quarterback. It's going to be a yard after catch type of offense. Get the ball into your, in your uh, weapons, your, your receiver's weapon hands and fast and let them do the thing. I like their receivers and I like their tight end position and their offensive line better than I like what the Patriots have right now. I give the edge to the Patriots a little bit in the quarterback position. Okay. I'll also add the coaching. Miami's actually got a real offensive coach there. Now, again, he's a rookie head coach, and he's, and he's one of these McVay whippersnappers, which is actually a good thing. That system has actually proven, you know, there's a lot of guys across that league running that system that have gotten good play out of the quarterbacks, good offensive play, you know, so that's a, that is a proven, established, that's really the offense in the NFL right now, Ted. It is the new wave offense that is the established offense in the league. So Tua has that coach and that system. What does Mac Jones have for yeah. coaching? And sit, like, so, like, I think Miami's pass catchers are better. I think their coaching on offense is probably much better, even with, even with the inexperience. So that's kind of scary. For a young quarterback, too, it hasn't had the coaching that he's needed. Let's, for, let's face it, as good of a coach, I think, head coach as Brian Flores is, it just he hasn't developed maybe in the last couple of years like you would hope. You get a guy in like Mike McDaniels, who's now the new head coach for the Miami Dolphins, with the pedigree that he has that you mentioned with the 49ers, Sean McVay, and, you know, all of a sudden, he could take off. His confidence could take off, and now he has weapons galore at his disposal. And so, look, I, I don't think Tua – I think Tua's probably, a, you know, poised to have his best year as he's so, ever had. Do you think – do you have Miami ahead of the Patriots right now? Absolutely. I okay. Have ahead of and the Parker trade doesn't – Tip that balance. No, it, it really doesn't. I mean, they, they have too much uh, speed on offense, and they're too dynamic uh, with the wide receivers, the tight ends, and the running backs that they have.